The memes are rolling in and everyone is starting to feel wildly euphoric. Whether bearish or believing we are oversold, it is a wild time here in crypto land. So I'm going to be going through and sampling some important sentiments from the market and then delivering a conclusion to you as to how I'm going to be approaching my crypto stacks for the short term, mid term and long term here in 2022. As it's only January 6th, but we already have seen some huge indications as to where this market is going to be taking us over the coming weeks and months. You're definitely going to enjoy this one. So although you might not like the markets, please like the video as we're working hard to bring you the most up-to-date information to navigate this wild world that we call cryptocurrency. First of all, a quick note, things are wild and changing really fast. We put out a highly requested video that is really reflecting the current market conditions on trading Harmony this morning. And that is because it is one of the only ecosystems showing strength through the dip. Kind of reminds us of what was happening with Solana and Luna and AVAX throughout dips in 2021. And we all know how that ended with those projects who showed strength ending up adding to that strength over time. I'm not going to make the case to you that I've been bullish on Harmony. In fact, I've almost never talked about Harmony One. However, in these market conditions, my job is to bring information that is relevant. And in this particular case, Harmony is absolutely a hot spot. And so understanding what may or may not be a good approach to that ecosystem, I think is relevant, which is why we made the decision to cover it this morning. So I just want people to stay grounded here there's no clout collecting on Harmony for me. I personally just want to deliver the most impactful information to you. And that's what's going to happen here through 2022 is that things are changing rapidly. It feels like a whole new market from where we were just a month ago. And it's important to react and update your approach to the markets as things change. I'll be giving more of a summary on that at the end of the video, but let's dive in first to what's going on market wide. First of all, it's no secret that the memes are flooding in and people are very, very bearish and feeling very, very rugged by what was a healthy and prosperous market all of a few weeks ago. And we've seen bull euphoria turn to bear euphoria, first in DeFi summer, then again in Q1, then again in NFT mania, and finally with metaverse mania and the gaming run, especially after Q1, we tried to do our best here to explain the importance of taking profits on the way up. Because as you guys have noticed, calling tops is very tricky. And in the end, if you're not selling methodically on the way up, chances are you will miss your opportunity and selling emotionally while everything is going down is usually not the best way to extract value from the market. Believe me, I've gotten crushed by this market many times. I'm not perfect. And learning these lessons and the pain of them is partly what helps me grow as a trader and get better. But in the end, the question is not whether or not we're bearish. You guys know that. The question is what's coming next. Now, Light Crypto, who's a dedicated trader here. I'm not a trader. Crown's a trader. Light's a trader. Uh, Light's saying here, people are really capitulating into one of the most stacked bids he's ever seen. Emotional will be punished shortly, I think. And he's showing here that there is a ton of buy pressure here at these low $40,000 levels. And he saying people are selling into them, effectively saying you're selling the bottom. He's saying the same vapid thought process for being bearish here was being peddled with the exact opposite conclusion at the top. Stop being a sheep and learn from your mistakes. Wasn't the whole idea to buy low and sell high. Effectively, he's saying that buying here is buying low and that selling at the top was selling high. He's also implying that the Fed news, the tightening news that we got in December, that we were anticipating in December, was the thing that made most sort of astute forward-looking traders sell at those levels. Now, I personally underestimated the Fed's decision to control inflation. I thought they would just kind of let it run because they have no other options. But it seems as though politics have now shifted to demonizing inflation and that the president effectively is deputizing the Fed to control inflation. So in these conditions, the flood of cash into assets like Bitcoin or risk assets in general is going to be turned down. The noise on that is going to be turned down. It feels as though orange coin very well might suffer for the next few months. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the entire crypto market going to suffer. In fact, we're seeing quite a bit of evidence to the contrary right now. Before I do get into that, I want to talk about who's holding Orange Coin, who's holding Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and what this last move down might have been. Now, whether you like him or hate him, I find Suzu's insights to be pretty interesting. One path-dependent fact of history is that the COVID March 2020 dump regrettably flushed out a lot of true believers, crypto natives, who were long for having. On the way up, crypto caught a bid from macro funds looking for a higher beta play to monetary conditions. So effectively what he's saying is a lot of the big long-term believers in crypto that held throughout the bear market waiting for the halving actually got flushed out by the March 2020 flu dump, whereas the macro hedge funds that were realizing the money spigot was about to get turned on, the ones who went super long on NASDAQ also saw crypto as a faster horse betting against the dollar. Well, effectively what he's saying here is a lot of risk got transferred from crypto native true believers to hedge fund speculators. Now he's saying he's in the camp that with or without COVID, that crypto was going to go up anyway, and that the flush 
simply change the makeup of the market participants. He's using evidence of this by saying that Bitcoin and SPX correlation increased substantially, saying effectively that people who were bidding on Bitcoin started bidding it as if it was a tech stock. Now, the point he's making here is that what we're seeing now is an unraveling of the macro fund positions as taper comes closer and that these people have started front running this taper much in the way that we've seen in the mainstream stock markets. Now, as we know, Sue, the trademark owner of the super cycle is a permable, but he's saying this is healthy and much needed for the market. Market. One of the biggest reasons I was bearish in November was because I could sense that this type of market participant would be taking profits every 5k higher on BTC anyway, would be too facile for market to give them a cozy exit. So who's left after this? Individuals and families looking to store value on high timeframes, individuals looking for greater economic freedom and opportunity in an on-chain world, investors looking to deploy in the fastest growing secular trend of the last decade. I would add innovators and builders in Web3. I don't know if that fits into this, maybe individuals looking for greater economic freedom, but I think that the biggest camp left here are the builders in Web3. We'll talk about that at the end. This capitulation plus transfer of risk back to the market was very important for crypto. I expect a much lower SPX crypto correlation going forward. It's not a coincidence that the coins macro boomer own the least of are holding up the best near Adam Phantom at current levels. Effectively, what he's saying is that what we've just seen washed out are the macro hedge funds that started bidding at the beginning of the pandemic. And now they are effectively taking their profits off the table as the shift in monetary conditions has kind of brought that party to a close. But what's left is that the risk is being transferred back to true believers and that these people are, you know, the ones who are going to hold through bear markets and the ones who actually believe in the future of this industry, not just trading a high beta play. Very interesting analysis and certainly one that would favor the bulls as this transition works its way through. We also have John Bollinger, who I find to be a very strong, unemotional observer of this entire market. He's the creator of the Bollinger Bands. He doesn't really have a horse in the race with Bitcoin and crypto, but he stepped in and said, hey, attention, Bitcoin holders. We are pulling into an important accumulation zone, logical place. If and when we find support, you may want to consider adding to your bags here. If not, hodl on. Another opportunity would present itself. Now, this echoes very strongly with this Nick Carter tweet, which is the number one goal in the industry is always just survive, stick around, don't blow up, do that and you will be okay. This is really the only law of crypto you need to know. And it echoes what John Bollinger is saying, which is, hey, look, the reality is crypto is so generous. The only people who truly lose out, and I've gotten wrecked in crypto many times, but the fact that I just stuck around and kept grinding and kept focusing, kept my chin up and moving forward, I was able to hop on the next opportunity and do it with more tact, manage risk even better. And each and every one of these crashes teaches me lessons, makes me better. But the point is that the future is bright, but you need to stick around to be a part of that future. And so is the bull market it over. I think that's something that is kind of a dicey topic as we've seen fleeting elements of bull and bear throughout 2020 and 2021. But without discussing that in too much depth, the reality is that Jory Alexander here points out, we are oversold and should get a bit of a relief bounce. So if this bounce is really scary to you, like I said, relief bounces after these crashes are very, very normal. And when that happens, if this risk is too much for you to stomach, on those bounces would be the time that you'd want to take some of that risk off. Remember, surviving is thriving. So plenty the long-term game. I want to be clear here, this is not me calling a bear market and saying I'm out of the market. I still maintain significant exposure to crypto gaming, NFTs, and the parts of the market that I think have the chance to outperform in these conditions, which we'll talk about at the end. So we've established that the trade here against the macro monetary conditions was definitely a good one if you knew how to take it. I certainly didn't. So don't blame yourself if you didn't. Again, it shows I'm not perfect and I never claim to be for those people out here who think I do. I am excited when I do get things right. Of course, I'm going to brag about those because 150x can make up for 49 investments going to zero. Very important when you do bag those. So of course, the parabolic upside always outweighs the downside, which is why it is important to cover those. However, this is a really important transition where Punk6529 says this, if crypto nukes in 2022, I think 2022 will be the first year where usage and adoption will detach from price levels. Usually interest peaks when prices are going up. NFTs have utility outside the general crypto price levels. The tidal wave of usage is going to keep coming. Now, I certainly believe this. And as you guys know, I believe that crypto gaming and NFTs will get their day in the light during a bear market, which is exactly where we are. Now, of course, my plan was to sell the top in Q4 and buy the bottom here in 2022. But now that we are experiencing the downside in 2022, it feels bad. It sucks. But the reality is if you took some profits on the way up at all, you'll be in a position. You'll have some funds to deploy here as things start to shape up. And we see the bottom of the pool here on this dip. More to the point, though, I think this prediction is really, really interesting interesting. And it's going to be proven out here by a few examples that we're about to go through, which is that we are starting to see crypto ecosystems genuinely grow and hold their user bases and create a ton of excitement in the products. 
I believe that the tip of the spear there will be gaming, whether it's GameFi, play to earn, play and earn, crypto gaming with NFTs, NFTs with gamified economics like Wolf Game. All of those things are usages of NFTs in games of some sort. And I believe that that is going to be the meta for 2022. I really just believe that that's the meta for crypto in general. But this is a very interesting opportunity where we might see the general market get really tricky, get really dicey, but certain projects will end up succeeding because they get their formula right, kind of like it happens in the normal world, where just because I have a shipping company doesn't mean my shipping company is the same quality as FedEx, right? Just because FedEx goes up in value doesn't mean Elio ships is going to go up in value, right? This is probably what we'll start seeing here in 2022 is that strong projects and winners will build and grow strength while there won't be an easy market-wide throw a dart and go up only mode, especially after seeing what's going on with Harmony and Cosmos and all of the strength in these alternative chains, it's becoming clearer that the people who are able to overcome their stigma for new stuff, or as Ansem would say, by the way, I think copy trading Ansem might be the simplest way to navigate 2022. Don't quote me on that, but so far he's been absolutely godlike on the calls, just absolutely crazy. Shout out to Ansem. He says here in crypto, doing things that are annoying for alpha before the market makes it easier for everyone else usually pays for itself pretty quickly. He's in this case referring to bridging to Harmony One to play DeFi Kingdoms. We are going to be doing a deep dive into DeFi Kingdoms in the coming days and weeks because it's a crazy success story, especially in these turbulent times that seems to be influencing all of gaming and DeFi in general. So we'll definitely be going through and explaining that ecosystem to you. Full disclosure, I don't hold any DeFi K. I haven't longed Jewel and I've missed out on this trend. But again, the goal is to learn from this and to make sure that we're not missing out on the lessons learned from DeFi Kingdoms. And as you can see here, despite the stock market weakness, we have GME up 20% after they announced that they were going to have an NFT marketplace. Again, we're going to see here that products, especially in important narratives like NFTs, marketplaces, games, this is what crypto is moving towards. And the projects that are able to deliver here will buck the trend, I believe. And once again, if you're doubting the direction of this industry, or you think that maybe this weakness that we've established, the change of monetary policy, is some kind of overwhelming damnation on crypto itself, just know. This is the direction of the internet. This is the direction of the world. It's not a question of if, but when. And looking back on this moment, this weakness, I believe that there's going to be amazing entry points into projects. You build your stacks during the bull market with the intention of buying low on incredible assets during the bear market. This is the ultimate goal for crypto is to buy stuff that is amazing at low prices. And this is made even clearer by Disney's announcement that they are pushing forward with their own metaverse. Metaverse is not a meme. Metaverse is the future. It's how we're going to be spending our time in 10 years, maybe even sooner. But the reality is that the projects that succeed in metaverse and gaming are going to be some of the biggest and most influential pieces of technology in the world, especially those open source protocols that crush it. I'm sure you guys know where I'm going with this, but you know, marketplace, metaverse, gaming, what can I say? There's a reason why I'm so obsessed with this stuff. And once again, we get an update on CBDCs with China announcing that they're going to be putting their CBDC into WeChat. Now, this is huge because this is a digitization of one of the biggest currencies in the world. And to me, CBDC is a massive on-ramp, a slippery slope that leads inexorably without any question into a Bitcoin-backed, Ethereum-backed, blockchain-backed digital future. This stuff is massive. I'm not saying that China's CBDC is good. In fact, it's highly flawed, centralized, and it's going to be a massive surveillance system. But the reality is that governments, as they adopt crypto for their national sovereign currencies, it's hard to deny that this is once again evidence that Web3 is going to take over and completely run our modern economies, our modern tech world, our modern lives. Once again, another Ansem call, Octo, Octopus coin, uh, again, is going crazy. Like I said, copy trading Ansem in 2022 is not a bad idea. But what we're seeing is that people who are involved in alternative ecosystems are crushing it. And especially in these times, the projects that are showing tremendous strength are things you should have on your radar. Are they guaranteed to go up? Am I saying to buy this? Absolutely not. I'm just saying observe the trend. If I was quicker to jump on the trend for Solana, if I was quicker to jump on the trend for Avalanche, if I was quicker to jump on the trend for Luna, I would have made way, way, way more money. And those would have been great buys. It was the same with Kusama in the end of 2020. The coins that really bounce hard during these days, 
dips are usually the coins that have tremendous community strength and are due for some pretty wild runs in the near future. This is a big learning from 2021, and we need to bring that into 2022. Once again, some more and some wisdom. We have ETH DeFi Season 1 was 2020. Cosmos DeFi Season 1 is 2022. I don't make the rules. I simply follow them. He's saying effectively Cosmos DeFi Season. I actually have a Cosmos validator node on Akash Network, which is one of the coolest decentralized web projects on Cosmos. If you guys are looking to get into Cosmos, I think Akash is one of the strongest projects there, as well as Adam, which we did a deep dive on last year. And it seems as though Adam's even changing up their tokenomics so that it would have some kind of price growth with total network activity. So Cosmos looking super, super bullish, super strong for 2022. And again, learning more about this ecosystem, Osmosis, which we've covered a few times, Cosmos and Akash, those seem to be a hot sector. Again, I'm not saying you're foolish if you didn't jump on those. Just observe the trend and get familiar, learn, because if these things are showing so much strength in this market, whenever Bitcoin bottoms or the market reaches a floor price on this move, I'm very, very interested to see what happens with coins like that. And finally, a project that I've been talking a lot about, which is World Wide Web 3, a project that has evaded the eyes of many, but we've been covering since it had about, I don't know, 2,000 followers here. I believe we were one of the first content creators to cover it, has absolutely been crushing it. And look, they have this little platformer, Super Smash Bros game that you can play with a whole bunch of different avatars from different uh, NFT ecosystems. Again, they just continue to crush it. This is what Metaverse is all about. And uh, I'm very, very excited to see what uh, Hacker.eth, his name's Thomas Webb, is going to do next. Definitely keep an eye on this. The land prices for this game have been going just totally parabolic. So if you got it at the early part, congratulations. And once again, NFTs are just absolutely ripping up the charts while the market's in a bear mode. Again, this could be a sign of what's to come. If the market remains boring here, it's unlikely that NFTs are going to be stagnant. So ignoring the overwhelming urge to make price predictions right now, the reality is that once everybody has caught on to a certain directional consensus, right now everyone's saying, okay, monetary policy tightening, bear market. And now it feels like that's almost the consensus. And as Light pointed out, once your taxi cab driver is talking to you about monetary policy hurting crypto, chances are the opportunity to take advantage of that move has already passed. We're also seeing a lot of dispassionate observers stepping in and saying, hey, look, Bitcoin crypto looks pretty oversold right now. So accumulating here as opposed to selling might actually be the move. We have Suzu stepping in and saying the risk has been transferred away from the traditional hedge funds towards crypto and Web3 believers. All of these things are positive if they are all true. You need to start to learn to think for yourself here, but my experience has been that panic selling the bottom is not really the way to go. Now, does that mean that we can't go lower? No, in fact, I believe there's a high likelihood we might dip a little lower. But on that dip into the high 30s or mid 30s, if that happens, or even if we just stay right here and start to get really boring for a while, I think it's quite likely that we might experience a good accumulation zone. But more importantly, I think it's important that we start differentiating a full-blown bull market or a full-blown bear market from identifying and doing the hard work to find good projects that are able to hold and grow users. In the end, the point of cryptocurrency is to deliver products and services that make people's lives better. The products that do achieve that should grow in value. The products that don't should not. And so looking at the excitement around NFTs, around gaming, around GameFi, around alternative chains, we see here that there is a ripe formula for Web3 believers to come in, support, and see growth within strong projects. The trick here is to survive survive, learn to identify these projects. The trick here in 2022, I believe, is to survive, learn to identify strength, manage your risks so that you don't get overblown if the market takes another leg down, and just in general, stay an active learner and observer. I personally am maintaining my exposure to gaming and metaverse, especially strong projects that are showing that they can hold and grow users. That is absolutely the ultimate goal here. And I also have a huge exposure to NFTs. I am also going to be doing a little more dabbling in NFTs as the market's white hot and we've seen throughout the last dips that NFTs tend to go very, very bullish once mainstream crypto and altcoins get fairly bearish. So in short summary, it does feel as though we are at some significant support levels. The chance of accumulation here or at least a bounce from here or a little bit lower than here seems quite likely. Again, if you're freaking out because you didn't take profits during the bull market, maybe on the next bounce, which I believe is a high, high likelihood will come, that would be a chance for you to take some risk off. But I'm personally more interested in seeing the seas calm down a little bit 
identifying strength, building positions around that strength, and continuing to dive head first into gaming, NFTs, and metaverse, because those are the products I believe that will actually be able to attract users, to attract attention, and to eventually grow regardless of market conditions. It's why I got into gaming and NFTs back in 2018 during the bear market was because I couldn't rationalize any other sector having the mainstream impact that this sector could have. Once again, we're back to uncertainty in the macro and crypto, but this time we have a generation of games, some from projects that I know you're very familiar with on this channel that are about to hit the market and start appealing to normal everyday users. Very interesting time here in crypto land. You're living through history and I believe as always there are opportunities for the hungry. There are punishments for the emotional and that in the end, this is all part of the noisy transition from a centralized web two world to a freer, more equal and more democratic web three future. With that said, I'm Elio Trades. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you smash that like button. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. I'm gonna be tweeting, maybe memeing a little bit through this crash to keep those spirits up. But as always, I will be here with you each and every day, keeping you up to date and trying to give you the absolute best information that I could muster here in the crypto space. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.